It says like this. So we're discussing Bitaqan and Hashem. A person has to trust in Hashem. So we're discussing all the different reasons and all the different why we trust in Hashem and why Hashem is the only one we can trust in. And when a person understands all of Hashem's capabilities and why we trust in Hashem, a person will understand and develop and learn how to trust in Hashem. It says a person has to believe. It's a simple, simple Jewish, simple Jewish belief. We'll call this. There's nobody in the world that can harm a person or help a person, and this person can't even harm himself or other people, not unless it's with the permission of Hashem. Right? That nobody in the world could help you or harm you or do anything to you, not unless it was with the permission of Hashem. There's no exceptions to this rule. Did you again? Huh? If he doesn't deserve it, you wouldn't do it. If he deserved to get punched in his face, let's say, he deserved it. Who's going to do it? That's his Bukhira to do it. But if he wouldn't deserve it, it wouldn't happen to him. If you get hit by a car. If he wouldn't deserve it, it wouldn't happen. One time I was walking in Russian Parkway, like 5 in the morning, I was going to an Etrian, I was listening to a shir, it was winter time, I was wearing all black, it was like snowing and everything. And, I was, and, and it happened. Some car was making a turn. He didn't see me. But it's your fault. You were listening. No, my, it, it was a walk you, sign. You were listening to the music. You were out of it. No. You didn't hear the but it, car. But it was a walk you sign. maybe jumped earlier, but it was his right away. It was my walk sign. It said it walk. walk sign. I'm walking across the street. He was turning. He has to look to see if there's pedestrians. He just went. He didn't look. Don't forget. You know, the, yeah. In America, when you have a walking sign, you have to be careful. Because I woke up and I was whatever it was. Ran away. Yes, of course I deserved it. If I wouldn't deserve it, it would happen to me. Right? Of course I deserved it. If Hashem did it to me, then it means Hashem saw that I deserved it. And everything in the world that happens to a person, whether it's good or whether it's bad, is all, all in the permission of Hashem. There's no exceptions to this rule whatsoever. Right? Anything from A to Z. I heard. Would you say that it's also to be impacted, a person can be impacted indirectly? That also is from Hashem. There's no, there's no exception to this. Like last week, your cousin, remember he was saying, if you somebody suffers, everybody around you suffers. No, everybody around you deserves to suffer. Yeah. If he got hurt, yeah, that, that wife, it's parents, suffering. So, they all deserve the suffering. That's true. Yeah. That's one of the that's reasons. That's one of the reasons that they say that a person should build relationships <laughs> with very righteous people. That if somebody who's very righteous loves you and cares for you, so even though if something was meant to happen to you, but if it would harm somebody else that doesn't deserve it, it will be prevented from you. Last week we did that with uh, Isaac. Oh, no. right. that's, that's one of the things. But that's a little bit... Uh, so, so, so everything that we're, we're saying that, you know, anything in the world that happens to a person doesn't have, have to be negative. in an old age, if Brooklyn got six kids and this does the way some Lord, it's grown. That's already, they're not talking about that. So they're they're normal, so normal. Like people die. Normal is normal. Normal is normal. Normal, talk, normal progression. So anything, even if a person does something good to you, for example, if a person, you know, calls you and he tells you, oh, I have a good business deal, you want to go in on it with me. That was also me, Neshe Maim. Baruch Hu, you deserve to have that amount of money that was coming to you. So Hashem orchestrated that it will be given to you in such a way. Swindle? It's a swindle? Swindle. Some people, people are naive. They can't with the you gotta business. Be, you uh, gotta be careful. If you did, if you did everything that you you're can. You're a righteous man. You think if that you, it's from Mishama. If you, and the guy comes if, actually wants to rob you. If but you, it's like a mass, uh, If you horrible. did everything you can, you have an obligation to do everything you can based on normality. You can't just say, okay, I'll do it and whatever happens, happens. Hashem gave you brains for a reason, and to make you a robot, right? If you did everything that's required of you to do, take the proper precaution to make sure that it's the right thing to do, to do everything on paper, to do everything on a document, to discuss them. If you did everything the way you're supposed to do it, and you got swindled anyways, yes, you deserved it. Hashem wanted that that happen. Knikar Dugman, he said, imagine if you have a, a, a slave, right? It's not so common today, have a servant, right? A person that you buy, and he belongs to you, and he works for you. He says, imagine this slave, he has a few different masters. 
one master here, one master there. He's like, before they, no, before they used to have, say, three partners would buy a slave, two days by you, three days by you, two days by you, or like, they would also split it, right? He says, imagine if every single master could, you know, give his slave whatever he could give his slave differently. So the slave knows he has three different masters, so he trusts in every single one. He knows that he'll take care of him, he'll take care of this, he'll buy him that, he'll give him a place to sleep, he'll give him food. So the slave is trusting in his masters to be able to take care of him. So if he has three masters, he trusts in three masters, right? Because he knows that he's going to receive benefit from all of them. So he equally trusts in all of them. But he says, imagine if one master is much more capable and much more powerful and has much more of an ability to do more for him. So he's going to trust in him more because I know you could do more for me, right? So then he trusts in him based on his abilities. So it could be that I have a lot of people involved with me in life. I could trust you more because than I trust him or him because I know that you have the capabilities to help me more and do more for me in life. So therefore, based on your ability and your capability to do more for me in life, I will trust in you more to be there for me. Right? That's how it works. However, he says, Avang, imagine that all these masters, he says, can't do anything to him. There's only one main master. He's the one who decides everything that's going to happen to the slave. Everybody else is under him. Nobody can really do anything without this master's permission. Right? He says, so you know you're going to trust on the main master now. Because you know even the other masters that you work for, at the end of the day, can't do anything to you without his permission. So at the end of the day, everything is going through him. He says, so you know you're going to trust him because you know that what? That nobody can do anything to you except him. He's the main man here. Right? It's like a person that is working for a company. You have the managers and you have the boss. The boss makes the decisions. The managers just play out the decisions. Right? So the worker doesn't really care so much about the managers. He knows the boss is the boss. He's the one who decides everything. So it's also when it comes to, right, when a person feels and realizes that not one person in the world could either harm him or do anything good to him or bad to him at all, nothing, without the permission of Hashem, so he'll... Not only will he not be fearful of people, but he wouldn't look forward to help for people. For example, some people feel very um, weak in life, right? They might not feel so balanced. Some people, no, no, in, in stance, some people might not feel confident in life that they'll make it. Life is, has a lot going on. There's a lot of expenses and so on. Not everybody feels confident, say financially, that they'll make it in life, right? So they start to hope that their uncle will help them, their cousin will help them, their friend will help them. And they have people around them that are successful, that have money and so on. So they start to develop relationships with them. They have to hope for them. They start to become friendly with them because they're hoping that in life when they need them, they'll be there for them. Right? So they start to, to make friends and kiss up and to make, you know, all these different people that, right? Or they're scared. They don't want to lose a relationship with somebody because they know they really need them. Without him, he wouldn't have this and he wouldn't have that. But he says, if a person realizes that it's really all a Kaddish Baruch Hu, doesn't kiss up to anybody, he doesn't know, he doesn't need help from anybody, right? And not saying you should be careless, you always have to be appreciative, you always have to build positive relationships with everybody in life. But you don't trust in people because at the end of the day, you know it's all from Hashem, right? And you're not scared of anybody. That's like a person, right? You could be scared of somebody, or oh, this person is a big threat to my business, you know, I have to... Not scared of anybody. He knows at the end of the day, whatever Hashem wants, that Hashem wants. And it says by Kriyat Yamsuf, it says a person's Parnasa is like Kriyat Yamsuf. Right? You know, Kriyat Yamsuf is like Parnasa. Why, why is Kriyat Yamsuf compared to, why is Parnasa compared to Kriyat Yamsuf? What happened to Kriyat Yamsuf? Everybody was there. Shiduch also, everybody was at Kriyat Yamsuf. The, the Jews were there. On one side, they look, they see the ocean. Right? They're going to go and drown. They have nowhere to go. The other side, they look, they see all the Mitzrayim. They come, they want to kill them. They're stuck in the middle of nowhere. They don't know which way to go. What happens? Out of nowhere, HaKadosh Baruch splits the scene. It says the person's Panas is the same way. Sometimes a person might think this. Sometimes a person might think that. But at the end, it comes out of nowhere. Right? It's like, you know, you know, I remember, it's like you want to buy a house. Right? You're thinking, okay, I need to borrow, say, $200,000. So you know he's for sure going to give it to you. He's for sure going to give it to me. The ten people that you thought are going to give it give it to you, the six that you thought are going to give it to you, the four that you thought are going to say no, it's the other way around usually, right? The four that you thought no gave it to you, and the six that you thought no, I didn't hear, right? So a person. But networking did help you. 
networking? No, when you you said you have to know people, it's, this guy. It's norm, it's normally, no, you have to build normal relationships with people, but you don't kiss up to people or hope to people or know that without this person but I won't be able to do it. Bukharski, like you, you know, right. oh, you, you can't, 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 you don't trust in people. You don't say, oh, this person, I have to be very careful. Him, I have to kiss up to him to make sure that I, why? Because I know I need him, for, I know, I know I need him for this, I know I need him for that. At the end of the day, he says, you have to trust only in Hashem. Why? David Amalek says, He's saying a beautiful question, I'm sorry for that, I don't understand. No, no, <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah. He's saying most of the people today they kiss up to each other 24 hours. What we should do? Because this is the way of the style. <laughs> You have to be nice to people. There's their hair. It's simple being nice to people, being a gentleman, being nice. Sometimes you see old men kissing the young guy because he's rich. They don't even get to the level. Uh, so yeah, I'll tell you. It's like, it's like yeah, kissing no. me up right now. Why do my nephew the baran? I'm the example. So I'm just, I'm no, trying no, to I'm explain. Just saying, it's got nothing to do. I understand and what you're I saying. I see people got burned because they got yeah. into friends with the younger. I'm going to explain to you. What's, what's that? It's like I'm, go, I'm, like I'm going out with your son. To I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to, I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to explain to you. Sometimes people. I'm talking about people that feel. But you a, can see them. You one second, one second, one second. I'm talking about people that feel like they're incapable of life. Of so they want to go ahead and make sure that they befriend a whole bunch of people that are capable because they're looking to be able to receive help from them because they feel like if they can't help me, I can't do it. But they became one second, one second, one second, one second, one second. You're talking out, about out for them. one second, one second. What you're talking about is sometimes people that are younger. They might become very successful. So you find all the people that are suddenly kissing up to them. So you have to differentiate between the older people that you're discussing. Right? So if the oldest person, the older person you're mentioning is also very successful and he's kissing up to them because he sometimes sometimes when, when, when people that are making it like to befriend other people that are making it because they have more in common and they feel more of a business potential. There is a business reaction. That's just business. The guy who's the older doesn't need the guy who's younger. One second, one I'm answering you. He's making it on his own. He's just befriending him because they feel like they might have more in common and he might even give him more ideas to make money. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that are befriending people or people that looked up to people because they know that without this person I won't be able to make it in life. Or I have to be very careful that this person, I have to treat him very, very nicely because I know in life I'm going to need him in life. You know, like that's what he's telling you, that don't trust in people. At the end of the day, if Hashem wants somebody to help you, he'll put in his heart to help you. And if Hashem doesn't want to help you, nobody will help you. That's what he's telling you. One more thing. I know the guy, he's so rich. One guy paid the guy who's sitting in shul next to him $5,000, so he yeah. removed the guy. You, you, you understand how deep they go? So I'm going to tell you. Now, this is a rich guy, for example. I understand what I'm you're saying. I'm sitting here. Boris come along. I said, I want to sit next to Nisa. Yeah. And I buy you out. You buy me out. The guy gave the guy $5,000 so he can move. You want to buy me out? I'll move out. No, yeah, just want to sit so I'll tell you, I'm trying. I'll, I'll try to explain. So I'll try to explain something to you. I'm not talking. I'm not talking about when, 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 when we're dealing with people in business. I'm not talking about when people are in business and they're becoming and they're successful and they're up and and going. And there are other people that are successful and they want to develop a relationship with them because they want to become more successful. Right? That's just regular business relationships. That's okay. I'm talking about that people that realize that, oh, this person, all of my pronostic comes from this person. This customer of mine buys everything. I have to be very careful. You have to be nice. You have to be there hearted. But you're so scared. You're very careful. You start... You, you, really, you forget that Hashem is in the picture. You're not realizing that a Kaddish Baruch who sent you this person in order to give you Parnassan. You're looking at him as if he is him and he's not like a Kaddish Baruch who sent him. If Hashem wants, you buy from you. If Hashem doesn't want, you leave tomorrow. You could be as nice as you want to him. You could suck up to him all you want and in a day he can leave completely. Right? Sometimes you might hope to a person at the end he doesn't help you nothing. Right? So he's trying to tell you that at the end of the day, whether or not a person will help you or not, or whether a person or a person will be there for you or not, is all Min Hashemayim. It doesn't depend on you. For sure you have to be decent and nice and friendly. That you have to be with everybody. 
Right, you have to be with everybody. It's very hard to find a real man in this world. He says that even if this person will bring you something good, for example, you know this person is good with finding you deals. You call him and say, listen, I just bought a new watch. You have a good customer for me? He says, yeah, I have a customer for you. And he sends your customer, you make $10,000, right? He says, even though he sent you this customer and you made money off of it, it wasn't him. Because it's broke who sent him as a shleach to give you this deal. Understand, if Hashem wouldn't want you to make that money, when you would ask him, he wouldn't even orchestrate, you'd be able to answer. He'd say, I don't know. Right? He says the Kaddish Baruch Hu is the one that wanted to give you the Yeshua and therefore he sent it through him. There's no way in the world anybody could do anything for you without it being no, predetermined by Hashem. If you, don't kiss up, you hire a contractor. You hire a contractor to come fix your house. You hire a contractor to come fix your house. Right? You want to renovate your whole entire house. In the middle of the job, he just gets up and disappears. Now, Hashem is putting you to a test right now. Right? You have to realize at that moment that Hashem wanted this to happen to you. That's what he's telling you. That the fact that right now you're being harmed by him leaving would never happen if Hashem wouldn't agree that it should happen. He no. found another job and he left. No. How did it work out? No, no, no. no. Yeah, what? No. Okay, I'm saying something else. I'm saying yeah. the contract that he is doing Avera by leaving the job, this means that Hashem wanted him to leave the job it's his choice to leave the job no? it's his choice to leave the job but the consequence you a person deserves for example if a person no, he deserves something else no yes. no no if a person you deserve that the contract would say yes no, but don't receive a Jose that he did an Avera he did an Avera that's his choice but if you wouldn't deserve that consequences he would have not made that choice or Hashem would have gave you somebody that would have not made that choice also that's what Hashem wanted to you I'm telling you again that's it this is what Hashem wanted to you there's nothing you do if Hashem if Hashem if a person wouldn't deserve it this neighbor would have not said anything. He would have not even been there. Listen, my point being is over here is that anything that happens to a person is on me. Yeah, why? Yeah, why? If he's not going to kiss up, sometimes, you know, in dealing in business, if you don't kiss up to this guy or this guy or this guy, this way, nothing moves around. If you know this guy, he tells well, you about this building, well, he tells you about this watch, he tells you about yeah. this customer. It's called networking. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a difference with yeah, networking and kissing up. No. Kissing up is a you have to, you have to be, you have to be nice and friendly to people. That no, if you know, nice friendly. this is this is about nice and friendly because people, yeah, one second. Daniel. So if you if you know I that know if you know that you have certain customers, a certain networking, that you have to be that you have to be friendly with them, you have to be nice to them, or you have to show them extra special appreciation or mm -hmm. extra special attention because of the relationship that you have. You're allowed to do that, but at the end of the day, you have to understand. That everything that's coming to you through him is all mina shemaim, is all really from Hashem. That if Hashem didn't want this person to take anything from me, he wouldn't take anything from you. This guy is, he yeah. would never help you. How would this guy help you? How would this guy find you if you wouldn't have that personal relationship? Hashem will send you somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. The lady calls you. No, there's a difference. Yeah, he's saying don't rely on this guy. We're not relying on it. You're allowed to do your... He said loot to work towards this guy. But at the end of the day, you have to know that it's Mina Shemayim. Yeah. Meaning... meaning David, David, David. I'm saying something very simple. People, it's kissing up is today the whole world if it doesn't do it nothing moves around yeah that's right that, that's all. this is what is over here is another level that the rabbi is trying to explain that kissing up yes it is a mitzvah it's a part of business nice, you understand to be nice to people to everybody to being nice and everybody it's good a mitzvah but you should know at the end of the day everything that happens to you even though you're kissing up it's everything comes from hashem you have to put this in your system. Yes, you can be kissing up to everybody. It's a mitzvah to kiss up, to be nice to people, to be friendly with people. It's a mitzvah, it's too good. We have to like Yeah, but do the Gavaret, kissing up. Rambam Gavaret, is that a lie? Let me answer, let me answer. Kissing up means usually you do something to get something in return. No, 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 no. To be nice to somebody, just the kind of personality that you have. 
I'm saying again. Let me let me just summarize what I mean. It's just it's very simple what he's saying. He's trying to tell you that if you tell me that the business that you're in it's normal and it's accepted that this is the way of doing business, that people that are extra, extra nice to each other because that's how business moves around. But even when you're being extra nice and you know that's how business moves around, but deep down inside you have to know that it's really all from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that if Hashem wanted, you could have been nice to this person today, tomorrow, today, and you can make nothing. And if Hashem wanted, you could just say, yes, good morning, you know, I'll tell you a story that happened to me the other day. I, I work with a certain so so for his name is Rabbi Ben Chamo in Eretz Israel. I told him, I want him to write for me 10 pairs of tefillin. He told me, okay. He tells me that... 10 pairs of tefillin, I told him, write for me. He told me, okay, but he said that he just got a contract for a Sefer Torah. He told me he just got a contract for a Sefer Torah. And he said, after this, he's not going to be able to write me for another, like, a year or something. I said, okay, no problem. He tells me, Hashkacha Pratit, he tells me. He tells you, you want to hear a story, Hashkacha Pratit, he tells me. I was like, yeah. He tells me, this one guy came to me, he wanted to buy a Sefer Torah. He came to me with a whole bunch of... Yuriot, like everybody gives him an example, every sofer gives him an example, and he takes to his rabbi, and his rabbi helps him choose. He said he didn't really have anything in his house. He has one Yudiya, old one, from Parshat over there, Yehuda and, 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 and Yosef, right? And he had like one old Yudiya over there that was like half written, not even fully finished. And he's like, okay, whatever. He's like, you know, if Hashem wants me to have the deal, I'll have the deal. And he said everybody gave him full Yudiyot, nice, full, complete, he said he just gave it to him like this and he took it to his Ralph. And he said, it happened to be that this guy's name was Yosef and his father's name was Yehuda. Wow. He said, and he took this idea, brought it to his Ralph. He said, the rabbi said, buy this one. He was like, he was shocked by the Ashgacha Pratit. He said he didn't even hope that he was going to buy it from him. He just said, if I shall want, I'll have the deal. And he just gave it to him like this. He wasn't even expecting. Wow. Out of all the ones I gave him the nicest ones, he took this one. Okay. That's what he's trying to tell you that if a Kaddish Baruch wants you to have it, you'll have it. If Hashem doesn't want you to have it, you won't have it. You can be as nice as you want. If Hashem doesn't want you to have it, you will not have it. And you could just be a simple person and treat everybody equally. If Hashem wants you to have it, you'll have it. That's what he's trying to tell you, that nobody in the world could do anything for you or harm you or give you anything if Hashem wouldn't decree it. If Hashem didn't decree that this would come to you, it won't come to you no matter what, what you do. Is that true? Because let's say something doesn't normal happen for you. Normal something ishtadut. Normal ishtadut. But it, let's say you go out of the norm ishtadut. So, so sometimes, so sometimes, so sometimes it's decreed in a person that he has to do abnormal ishtadut in order to get it. But some people could even, some people could do even abnormal ishtadut and still not get it. So your Ishtadlut will only get you as far as what was determined and what was decreed for you to get. Meaning to say, if something was decreed for a person to get, but it was decreed that he has to make seven steps in order to be able to get it. So a person needs to do that Ishtadlut in order to get it. Right? Like the Ramchal says. The Ramchal says, Ishtadlut doesn't work nothing. He said, whatever is already predetermined for a person, a person will get. Whatever is not determined for a person, a person will not get. But he says, but what? He says the priest Ishtadlut is a fine. It's a punishment that God imposed on creation after the sin of Adam and Ishon that people have to do Ishtadlut. But he says, he says, the Jizrim says, he says that Ishtadlut doesn't help anything, but you must do it. You must do Ishtadlut. You must make the phone calls, make the deal, see the product, call, buy, sell, make receipts. You must do your fullest Ishtadlut, what your business requires. But he says the Ishtadlut doesn't work nothing. It's just a, a uh, what is that called? Uh, an, an imagination, right? The demyon, right? It, 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 seems, it seems like you're doing everything, but at the end of the day, whatever is determined, predetermined to you is going to come, and whatever is not determined is not going to come. You have an obligation to do what you need to do, right? You could find two different people. One guy, one guy could be doing Ishtadlut 10 hours a day. All he got. He make, I don't know, $10,000 a month. Another guy comes into work three, four hours a day, does some ishtadut here, there, here, there, here, there, nothing so simple, nothing so crazy, nothing so major, $50,000 a month. But lazy, you know why they, where we smile? Where, where, is the, where did the ishtadut work, right? Say we both, we, we, we're both in the same business, right? You have customers and I, and I have, and, I, and, and we have customers, right? Customer comes to your product, comes to his product. Same product, you charge $3,000 more. You buy it from you. Why? It's the same product. Okay. That guy is just as nice. Because this bro who decreed that you should have it. Can I ask you a question? Right. Three people do the same thing. Yeah. Yes. What that? 
Let's go on. Но Рамбам не сказали, что это. Но я, я не знаю это, что no. это сказал. Рамбам is a, a letter to his son, and he says, even if you sit around with bad people thinking that you're going to get some positivity from them or you're going to get some money, you don't even know how fast you're going to turn into them uh, by sitting with them. That's Rambam. true. In the, in the Psalm also, King David writes, I didn't sit with the people like that. Even if you sit with them thinking that you're going to maybe buy a house, <laughs> After a while, we're going to turn into that. His point being is over here Even if you take a that you have to trust in Hashem. Sometimes somebody you calls you, sometimes somebody calls you, tells you, I want an order from you. Order is this, order is this, order is this, order is that. You prepared the order, a very big order. Suddenly, last moment calls you, okay, I don't need it now. I need to cancel the order. Right? So you have to know, because this broker wanted, didn't want him to take the order from me. That's it. Move on with life. Come to the Tova. Somebody else comes and buys it also afterwards. If you accept the Nisayon and you say, Baruch Hashem, Echaz de Hashem, he didn't take it, everything's min Hashemayim. If you accept what happens with love, Hashem turns it into a blessing and you'll make much more out of that situation. That's for sure. Based on how a person accepts what happens to him in life, that's how it'll cause a reaction. That's a very important statement to know. Now, the next thing a person needs to know in order to trust Hashem. So we just mentioned before, one of the things a person needs to know when you trust in Hashem, that nobody in the world could do anything to you if it was not in the permission of Hashem. Nobody, nothing. Even a flat tire. Nothing can happen to a person if it was not decreed in Hashem, that that should happen to him. At all. Right? It says that a person should know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is good to a person, Already before a person was born, HaKadosh Baruch Hu did so much chesed for him. Even when a person, say, a person just born, is not, doesn't, is not, doesn't deserve anything, but HaKadosh Baruch Hu does chesed for him. Why? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu is, a, is, is about chesed. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is about rachamim. So see how much chesed and how much good Hashem does for the world and how good Hashem is for people. And even the people that don't deserve it, Hashem is so nice to them. And how much HaKadosh Baruch Hu is native to the world, right? A person sees that. He says, Rabbot Asita Ata Hashem Rukan Vidakam Rajan and then Rok Lech Gilm Dabar Vidakhan. Dabar Melech says that you can't even compare anybody to a Kaddish Brokhu to how good a Kaddish Brokhu is. Betor Nidava, Betor Chesed. Right? The Kaddish Brokhu gives so much chef in the world. We don't deserve this. Look how much wood there is in the world. Look at this wood. There's enough wood in the world to make houses and buildings and unlimited. Where do you get so much resources? Metal, wood, light, electronics, everything. This world has so much resources in order to give us a comfortable life. HaKadosh Baruch Hu put so much resources into the world and He gave us the brains to be able just to put things together and to be able to make our lives so much more comfortable. That's a tremendous chesed. HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't have to put this into the world. If Hashem wouldn't put wood and metal into the world, the world would be very difficult, right? If HaKadosh Baruch Hu wouldn't put energies in the world to be able to create all the electricity that we use, it would be very difficult. HaKadosh Baruch Hu put so much chesed in the world for us to be able to enjoy. When a person sees what kind of big bal chesed HaKadosh Baruch Hu is, it gives him more of a want and more of an understanding of why that a person should trust Hashem. So we'll stop here, we'll continue. We talk next week and we'll get back to the chot of Aninut. We're discussing the halakha of uh, mourning. I just figured it's good to, to see what it says inside. So the halakha of mourning that we're discussing, we're doing Aninut. Yeah. And in the Aninut, we're, we did the shuk. Aninut? I explained it, yeah, I'll say it again. Right, and we, we did the Shulchan Aruch last week, and I summed up the Shachs and Taz. This week we're going to do the Pitchei Tshuva. I'm going to explain to you how the Shulchan Aruch works also. You have the Shulchan Aruch, right, he's the main author, the main prophet, right, he's in the middle. And then you have the commentaries on the side, and then you have the Pitchei Tshuva on the bottom, where he compiles a whole bunch of questions and answers from different Gidolim that they had in their books. And he brings it on the page so you can see all the questions and answers that came up on this halakha pertaining to this halakha. And on it is that we mentioned that when a person dies, right? We should never know, person dies. First thing they do is say, right, the Sayyid Bracha. And then they do the Kriya, they do Kriya, they rip right away. Right, but we're not knowing like that we said. We said we, we do Kriya at the Kever, one after they bury the dead body, but really, when somebody passes away. That would be, be many say. Yeah, Sephardim, the Ashkenazim, they do Kriya right away. Yeah. So Ashkenazim, as soon as somebody dies, they say, and they do Kriya, they do the ripping. But the Sephardim, they do it at the 
burial when they bury the body. Right? But really? they said till, till the body is not inside you, you're not clear yet. Yes. Appear, no, but that's the way Sifaradim are no hag, but according to Halakha, really supposed to do clear right away. Now, next, Onen means... Onen, the Minag, we have Minag, that's our Minag. Sure. Now, sure. we have next, Onen... We have what's my Сифарадиги говорят, когда засунут... Правильно, он говорит. Он сказал, да? Да. А, 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 я не знал, что... А Худулин в момент и да. Now, then you have a stage called Onen. Until the body is not buried, a person is Onen. Onen is that the Chachamim came along and they said, it's a sur for a person to be involved in anything. You're not allowed to uh, drink wine, you're not allowed to eat meat, person is not allowed to work, not filin, no mitzvot, no nothing, no, just until the body is buried, right? A person is patu from all the mitzvot. Why? Yeah, a person that is, a person that is obligated to sit shiva for, a person that's obligated to sit avilut for, what? Oh, and then women are also on it. I know, I know. So, Onen is the, the one who passed away, not the... No, Onen is the family members. Oh, the family members. Say somebody passed away, all the family members that are obligated to sit Shiva for this person that passed away, Lo Leno, all these people are on anim. All these people, the obligation of Aninut falls on them. Right? They say the brothers, sisters, children, parents, Lo Leno, they all have an obligation now on end. They know Tfilin, no Mitzvot, no nothing. They part of everything. Till the body is buried. Right, till the body is buried. That's what we left off afterwards. Once the body is buried, then as Avelut comes. Right, then Avelut comes. So he's allowed to eat everything before the body is buried? No, no meat, no wine. No meat, no wine. Everything else he could eat. Right? Friday night Then you're allowed to. We said that last yeah. week. If somebody ah, dies on sorry. if somebody dies on Shabbat or somebody yeah. dies on Yom Tov, there's no Aninut. You just yeah. do everything normally. The only things that are gonna be a sewer is learning Torah and a person being with his wife. Those are the only things that are asura on Yom Tov and Shabbat as an onen, because those are the things that are not uh, public, right? not visible. Right? On the second day of Yom Tov, we said that it's, if a person wants to get people to bury the dead body on the second day of Yom Tov, then there is aninut even on Yom Tov, which generally people don't do that. People generally wait until after Yom Tov. Sometimes maybe if it's Shabbat and two days in Yom Tov, the body is going to be left out for, for several days. Maybe there are people I know that uh, think one of the big Hasidah Shurevis, they passed away, they buried him on the first day of Yom Tov through Goyim. Right, so there, huh? by if first day you could have Goyim buried, second day even Jews. Jews could bury. But we generally wait until after Yom Tov is over. We generally wait until after Yom Tov is over in order to be able to do Something properly. So finish. if a person would want to bury on Yom Tov, there would be an inut. You would not be able to eat, drink wine and eat meat and everything. No, it cannot be driving and all these different things. It has to be if it's right there and then. Right there and then. Which is an, and not so practical. It's not so applicable. Right? If a person is maybe right there, they can take him and bury it. But uh, otherwise, no. Spat Moshe, Kanesh Moshe. Ah, no. No, no, no. Why is that? Because an oval is also to do anything that brings a person to happiness. You can't even pick up your little baby to play with them. No satisfaction. Well, person has to be an avel. Person. During the week of Shiva, nothing. No, we'll get to that. But right now we're still on Inut. The next we're gonna get to, we're gonna get to before before the burial. Right, so the Pitre Chuva here, he has a lot of shade. So he says, so he brings over here, right, that you're not allowed to eat meat, but he brings another Behuda that says, what about if you have food that was made with meat, you don't want to eat the meat, but you want to drink it, for example, right, soup. So for example, say your person is home, they're making soup, and suddenly he gets a phone call that a uh, family member Lola you know, passed away. So now immediately it became onen. We can't eat the soup. Right? Can't have meat inside. So he says you can't eat the meat, but if they just want to give you the soup without the meat, you can eat the meat, you can eat the soup with, without with just the vegetables. Right? That's what the other view that says. He says an onen is allowed to have the rotev of the basar. Right, the rotev, the actual <laughs> juices of it. Anything except meat and chicken. Meat. 
right? It says over here also, it says over here also that a person that's an onen is not allowed to say any brachot. Right, he eats without a brachan, everything without a brachan. However, it says even though there's no brachot, he must wash his hands if he wants to eat bread without the kilat yadayim. Yeah, because there there's an avera not to wash person's hands. We didn't hear the rab. The rab said something right now. Until he didn't bury, he doesn't make no brachot for anything. Right? Yes, no brachot, not filin, no nothing. So he eats without a brachot. And everything without a brachot. Just when you eat bread, you have to wash your hands without brachot. Even if a person wants to make a brachot, is not allowed. A person is not allowed to answer a main, not allowed to dive, and answer nothing. Even if he wants to, he's not allowed to what? He has to wash his hands before bread? Yes. 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 Without a bracha. No, but he doesn't have to. No, he has to. He because has there's to. a serikha well, bit over there. Well, he if he don't want. Because the gizera was was the, was that when the Beit Dash gets rebuilt, that the Kohanim should wash with chuma. And if they don't wash, it's an avera. So therefore, they will margil us to watch now. So there's a. Oh, then has to wash the other bracha. No, he's patur from it. He's, he's patur from it's what to do, but he's not allowed to do avera. If you're eating bread without washing, he says that's an avera. Let's, let's answer one question. Okay, one time. Yeah. It's an avera if you don't do it. That's what he's telling you. But it's avera also to eat without a bracha? It's also avera not to put on the No, that's a shav. That's a shav al ta'aseh. There you're refraining from doing a mitzvah. And that's a b'shav al ta'aseh. But here, when you're actually physically eating the bread, Chachamim required you to wash your hands. He says by, he says by, look at he says over here. Right? He says, Why? 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 משום סרח תרומה לפי זה ידע וגזירה דרבנן אין ספק דחייב דחולו הוא לאוון מדאורייט ורבנן האונן חייב ואני תסי דרב הפרסן would eat without washing his hands during the better מקדש hands wouldn't be tar would be דאורייסה and since they made the גזירה to refrain to go stay away from that love so therefore it's a גזירה it's like an Easter to a דאורייסה if a person's hands if a person's no, if a person's hands during the Beit Hamikdash, right? So the gizir, so therefore the Chachamim made a gizira to make netila. So if a person owes over that gizira, is an overness to the Rabbanan. It's worse than a Shabbat Asa when the Chachamim were mechayiv to do something. Here you're actually physically doing something austar. It's like being over a gizira. If 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 I if a guy cooked food for you, person's on end, he's allowed to eat, then not allowed to eat. There's a gizira to Rabbanan here. There's an issue to eat it. So you're doing. There's an issue to eat the bread. It's worse than just the Shabbat Tassel. Okay. Mozna Rush shake hands before the uh, the No, you can't do anything. But we gavariti Kata Vilutka after they put the body in. Before the body put in here. The, but the, before the body they put can you shake hands? No. No, you can't say shalom. Everything that's Asr is an Avel is Asr is an Ona. We're gonna see. No, can't say shalom. You could say, you could shake hands. You just can't say shalom. Ah, you can shake hands. You can't say shalom. We need to say the avel is not allowed to go and start giving people hand. But if somebody gives you a hand, you can't say shalom. Shalom is also to say. Right. Let's just do. Let's just do one more alacha and we'll stop. Kedab esever chokmat adam klal kuf nun gimel. If a person was in the middle of eating. If a person is in the middle of eating, if a person is in the middle of eating, and suddenly now somebody passes away, right? Close relative or just no? So close. Everything here is talking about relatives that a person is obligated to do shiva for. Say if somebody is eating and suddenly here somebody passed away, a relative, father, mother, whatever it might be, right? So now he's in the middle of eating. Now he's finished eating. Does he have to say berachat amazon or no? So it doesn't say Berchat Amazon, correct? But now say they bury the body. Say within an hour, two hours, they bury the body. And he's still full from his previous meal. Does he have to say Berchat Amazon or no? No. He says you do have to. After buried, tak bistret of shostala? Let's say it happened to that extent. Right? We need to say why. Sometimes if somebody passes away, if they can arrange the burial within, say, three, four hours, right? 
They arranged the burial within three, four hours, they buried the body. Some people don't have such big families. I remember there was a time a lady, her mother passed away, she asked me to arrange 10 men to bury her mother, they didn't know what to do. They go, they speak for five, 10 minutes, they take them to the cemetery to bury them. The whole thing takes a few hours. They're not, uh, not uh, 300 people for six hours, not, not everybody has that, right? So say they bury them, and you're still full from what you ate. That's right. So then you could say Even though when you're an Onen, or when a person is Onen, it's Patur. Or if a person right now say, he goes to the restroom, say he goes to the, to the, to the Bet Kvarot, the cemetery, and he needs the restroom. He goes to the restroom, he comes out, he's not allowed to say Asher Yitzhar, correct? But now they bury the body. It's still within 72 minutes from him using the bathroom. Yeah, now he could say Asher Yitzhar, right? It's That's the restroom. So, so the, there's a um, meek, really the Ben brings that it's 30 minutes, but Chamavadja brings there's a ritva, and he says that if the poskim would have seen this ritva that they didn't have during the time of the Ben Chai and the, and the Chavetz Chaim, that the ritva says it's a it's, it's shiur uh, pras, I think it was Malach, pras, 72 minutes. So therefore he says that if everybody would have seen this ritva, they would have also said 72 minutes. So therefore we do 72 minutes. Chamavadja says 72 minutes. No, not no, six, six hours. hours. Talk about me. The Mishnah Brewer says, that you don't even need to, there's no time. As long as you don't need the restroom again, it could be two, three hours also. Right? Mr. Bruce says as long as you don't need the restroom again, you're allowed to say Asher Yatzai. Right? But let's say 72 minutes. Say a person went to the restroom, he came out, they buried the body, even though he didn't have to say it before, he could say it afterwards. Or, if a person didn't put on tefillin that day, right? Or a person didn't daven that day. Or a person didn't say Minchot HaShachar that day. And the person heard that they uh, passed away in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning. And they buried the body, say at 11.30, 12 o'clock. So right now he could daven shacharit still. It's before chatzot. Right now he could put on tefillin still. Right now he could say merchot shachar, even though he was potter during that time. But now he is allowed to go and say it after the body was buried.